Okay, so most uh, species require at least some amount of natural habitat to persist uh, in the wild. And uh, so our research and also other people's research has shown that uh, the loss of natural habitat is probably the most important cause of the current biodiversity um, decline, the current biodiversity crisis. So there's the loss of natural habitat and then uh, there is this concept of the fragmentation of habitat. And starting about 40 years ago, there was this idea that in addition to the loss of habitat, uh, the fragmentation of habitat um, is also a problem for biodiversity. So if you can imagine, um, say you want to protect some habitat, let's say you're a government or a conservation organization and you want to protect, say, a total of a thousand hectares of forest. Um, you could protect that thousand hectares of forest in one big block of a thousand hectares or in say 10 smaller blocks of a hundred hectares each. And it was assumed starting about 40 years ago that it would be better for biodiversity if we were to protect the one big block of a thousand hectares. And uh, so what my research has, has shown over the past 30 years is that in fact that assumption probably isn't correct that it's at least as valuable to biodiversity if we are to protect uh, 10 100 hectare blocks of forest as if we were to protect uh, 1, 000, 1 1,000 hectare block of forest. So the, the effects of fragmentation in addition to or separate from the effects of habitat loss are actually not negative the way people have assumed. And this is actually really important for biodiversity conservation because what it means is that uh, it's important to protect the small bits of habitat as well as the big ones. So uh, in areas where you have had a lot of habitat loss, which again is the biggest impact, but where you have had a lot of loss of natural habitats, what you tend to have left is small bits of habitat. And if we assume that uh, only big areas of habitat are valuable, then we don't actually provide protection for those small areas of habitat. And that is really counterproductive from a biodiversity protection perspective. We really need to uh, start protecting even the small areas of habitat. Uh, so that's the, um, the issue of habitat loss and habitat fragmentation. Um, in addition to habitat loss, um, there is also the issue of uh, what's called connectivity among bits of habitat or areas of habitat. And so this is the idea that uh, uh, species, species will, some species, for example, need to have more than one kind of habitat to persist. So you could think of, for example, uh, the leopard frog, which will uh, reproduce in ponds or uh, wet areas along the sides of a river or a lake. And, uh, and then they will go and spend the summer foraging in meadows, you know, for foraging for insects in meadows. So they have two distinct kinds of habitat that they need to survive, which means they have to move between them in order to, for that population to continue. So, um, so it's important for them to be able to do that. So connectivity is this idea that um, if you think of a landscape, so when we think about a landscape, I, I usually imagine you're looking down from an airplane and it's kind of what you see below you. What does that look like? And so you can imagine that you could have a landscape with uh, two kinds of habitat in it where it would be easy for the leopard frog to get between them and another setup where uh, it would be difficult. And uh, because of the things that we've done, you know, things that we've put between. For example, uh, we have found that um, landscapes, agricultural landscapes with small crop fields in them um, have much higher biodiversity in general than agricultural landscapes with big crop fields. And that's probably at least partly because the animals have much more difficulty getting across a really big, you know, soybean field without dying essentially um, than across small ones where they would have refuge in the edges of the fields. And so they'd be able to sort of um, get through the landscape by going across the small fields much more easily than by going across really big crop fields. So that's one example. Uh, so this is the idea of, of connectivity. This is something that um, 
actually, I guess it was my master's uh, thesis that it, with my master's thesis supervisor, Gray Merriam, that we published in 1985, a paper talking about landscape connectivity. So the, uh, the basic point is that what we, uh, so we have the habitat, the natural habitat that's important, but it's also important because species need uh, to leave habitat, uh, natural habitats often, and so it's important that they, um, the, they don't, they can survive uh, when they go between different habitats. Um, and, and so, yeah, that's the, the idea of, of landscape connectivity. So this is actually connected directly to what I was just talking about, the connectivity issue. Um, so roads are actually um, one of the main impacts beyond the loss of habitat. Roads are a major impact on, uh, on biodiversity. So this is something, again, that my lab has worked on quite a lot over the past few decades. And, um, you know, when we started, at least in North America, there was this um, sort of skepticism, I think, that, that roadkill in particular has a big effect on wildlife. I think we're just used to seeing dead animals on the road and we just don't really think about it. But it actually turns out that those that roadkill, that road mortality, has a big effect on wildlife populations, especially on um, amphibians, frogs and toads, and on reptiles, so turtles and snakes, those populations, and also on mammals, larger mammals like predators that have low reproductive rates, like say wolves or um, that bears. So, um, so roads do have a big impact on wildlife, on wildlife populations. And um, so it's part of this issue of, of, you know, animals needing to move around through the landscape. They don't just sit in a little piece of habitat and spend their life there. They do need to move around. And roads are one of the big, um, dangers essentially that they face in trying to move around through the landscape. Um, so there's, there is this issue of, of they need to move around, but then they also need to survive. So there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a debate, I guess, in the road ecology uh, research uh, about whether you should actually try to keep them off the road. So try to keep them from being killed on the roads. Um, but at the same time, that will reduce their ability to cross the road. If you've got, for example, fences or if you build a road as a viaduct, um, well, if you build a road as a viaduct, they can get across. But if you, if, you, uh, if you put fences along the road, then they can't get across in those places. But at the same time, they're not actually getting killed. So the question is, which is better? And then, of course, you have the idea of putting wildlife crossings. Uh, there are some spectacular examples of very big wildlife crossing structures. There's a, a really great example in Banff National Park in Western Canada. Um, but there are other underpasses that are built for wildlife to go across roads as well. Um, so what our research has found is that in most cases, um, if, you, if you have to make a choice, um, so you've got a certain amount of money for mitigating the effects of roads on wildlife. It's best to start with keeping them off the roads. So the impact of the roadkill itself on the population is the big impact of roads in most cases. So what you want to do is, uh, you know, the fence, fencing them. I mean, fencing for small frogs is is a challenge, uh, but there's been lots of work on design design of, of ways to keep animals off roads. You can also raise the road bed. You can more expensively, like I said before, build it as a viaduct. Um, so we need to do that first, but then there are situations where, like I was saying before about the leopard frog, where they need to get across. They will need to get across. If they have to breed, you know, if they're, if they're spending the summer in one place and then they have to get to their breeding uh, site then and that happens to be on the other side of the road then they actually do have to cross so in addition to keeping them off the road uh, to stop them from being killed then in those situations we have to put the connections through but uh, but in general I think uh, what our research has shown is that there may be at this point a little bit of an overemphasis on the connections and an underemphasis in the mitigation on um, on keeping them off the road and keeping them from being killed. You know, the other thing that can be done that's probably more effective is to 
um, to reduce the amount of traffic on the roads because it really is the traffic volume. And there's all kinds of different ways that that, that can be, be done as well. So that's kind of a summary of our research on the road effects. Okay, well, first of all, why is biodiversity important? Um, I do not take an, a utilitarian view of this. I think it's less a question of science and more a question of sort of ethics, right and wrong. And, uh, you know, we are sharing this with other, this planet with other species. And I think we need to respect that fact and respect that, you know, they have a right to be there. And, um, and so, you know, it's like each species is to me more than, you know, the most valuable work of art, for example, uh, or, or archaeology that could be lost. And so losing individual species is just, I feel, is just criminal. L you know, losing them and reducing them greatly uh, in numbers. Um, so that's really the issue to me. It's just, it's just to me, it's to me, it's just wrong uh, to be uh, threatening all these other species, you know, millions of other, of other species, when we do know what can be done. I mean, when, I guess the, the main sort of theme of the research that I've done is, is to be looking at the relative effects uh, like of, of what we do and therefore what we can do to, to stop the biodiversity crisis. So we know, for example, that it's much more important to uh, preserve and and um, reestablish natural habitats uh, than to worry about you know whether they're fragmented or not for the, so that's just an example so we we that's that's the knowledge that we have of what we're doing um, is also the knowledge we need to stop reducing the, the you know this um, loss of species and so yeah I just feel that it's it's really um, not it, it's unjustifiable to be um, endangering a species for short-term economic gain or short-term you know human whatever we whatever it is that we want um, you know this species it's completely irreplaceable and like I said is as more valuable than you know the greatest masterpiece of art um, so yeah, we, we know how to reduce our impacts and uh, how, how we can actually bring ourselves to do that, I think is a matter of conscious, consciousness of, of our relationship with nature and of the value of, of nature, the value of other species, and, and um, that we need to think of, about that and, and, and respect, respect our place in, in the world. And, uh, and the place of all the other species and not have the arrogance that, you know, it's up to us whether they uh, survive or not.